What's up guys, today I have basically one question for you and that is how many languages do you speak? For lots of people watching this, the answer is more than one. Most people usually learn to speak a secondary language next to their native one, either because they grow up in a multilingual household or because they learn it in school. For most native English speakers though, attempts at learning another language in school are in vain. The good news on the other hand is that it's never been easier to change that. See, learning languages in school is such a backwards way of doing it because not only is it ineffective and slow, but it also takes out all the fun of it and in turn makes it something boring. And I partly get why it's done in such a way because everyone learns at a different pace, standardized tests and more reasons I won't get into right now. But all of these factors are vaporized if you simply use the internet to your advantage and turn learning a language into an adventure and not into a chore. And remember guys, the Duolingo bird won't come to kill you if you miss a lesson. So here we go with 5 stages you have to master in order to learn a new language. And stage 1 is finding your why. When starting any new project, the right kind of motivation is always one of the most integral aspects of it. Do you want to travel and dive into new cultures? Do you want to exercise your brain and see what you're capable of? Do you have a loved one or a spouse that you want to connect on a deeper level? Whatever the reason may be, remember it because it will keep you in for the long run. The journey you're about to go on will be a long-term skill that you want to keep from now on. I'll keep on using Spanish as an example from now on because it's what I set out to learn and so it's what I know most about. I started it because I have friends that speak it and I've always been in love with the sound of it and the whole culture behind it basically. And lucky for me, I got to study Latin in school which makes the process easier for me because Spanish is a Romance language and even German, my native tongue, is somewhat related to Latin. As said before, learning something that you already have knowledge of will make everything easier, but it's far from a necessity. Another thing that always fascinated me is that new languages simply turn you into a more interesting person, because they open up so many new doors for you. Be it via travels, the people you can get to know, and just you as a general package. Widening your vocabulary is a great exercise and doing that in a different language is probably the best workout your brain can have and it will keep you much fitter for decades to come. Stage 2. Aim for the top 1000. Now let's start actually getting into the more practical stuff. A lot of what I'm about to say is inspired by some of Nathaniel Drew's videos and I'll link one in the description down below. And the first tactic is really straightforward. You don't need to buy a course or even use apps like Duolingo. And yes, while they can be really helpful for starting out, they are not actually the most efficient because our goal isn't simply to learn as much vocabulary as possible. That's a short term solution, but we want this language to be a part of our lives from now on, remember? Instead of soaking in as much as we possibly can, we want to focus only on the most important or most common words because we can get way more mileage, let's say, from those compared to more random one-use words like sensational, for example. Have you ever heard of the Pareto principle? It's also called the 80-20 rule because it's a universal law which states that 80% of outcomes are determined by just 20% of inputs. For example, just 20% of drivers cause 80% of traffic accidents, 20% of a company's customer base make up 80% of the company's profits, and so on. So the best way to learn the 20% words that make 80% of the language is by handwriting down the 1000 most common words in an actual notebook. You can search for such a list on Google or you can research the most common nouns, verbs and other words and note them yourself. You could even look up words you usually use in everyday life to make it more personalized and more fun to yourself. Once you're done with that, or do it in batches to speed up the process maybe, you have to review them over and over again to start memorizing. Naturally, some words stick much quicker than others and some are real troublemakers. Once those words cross your path, start making visualizations, associations or build stories around those words to exercise your brain and to build connections. That way your brain can put more focus on tough words and remembering will become easier. Another thing you should do is record yourself speaking the words and then listen to the recordings over and over again. For example, while exercising, cooking, stretching, driving, yada yada. 
you know what I'm talking about. This builds further associations and you also don't miss out on the actual speaking and listening part of the process. Hi, Jim. Hello. If you don't know how to pronounce words or if you have trouble getting it right, research them online or ask someone else to do it for you if you have the option. Stage 3. Gluing everything together. Once you're comfortable with where you're at, it's time to start gathering the linguistic tools to string simple sentences together and to start expressing thoughts. This stage is called gluing everything together because we need to be able to connect the standalone words we've been memorizing up until now. Simply putting vocabulary together isn't what languages are about. We need to gather the most common pronouns, get a general feel for the tenses and also sprinkle in connecting words and language specific words to complete the picture. Let's start by learning how to conjugate the most common verbs and I'm also talking about irregular verbs here. And then from there on getting into the grammar of the most important tenses. Different languages have different amount of tenses to learn. For example, Old and Old Spanish has 48, which is a lot, of course. For general conversation basics, present, past and future conjugation really is enough. That's because what's important isn't perfect memorization of all the details, but a general understanding for a proper use. What you should also do is start catching general quirks and more nuanced stuff you wouldn't normally come across in a list of vocabulary. Once you dive deeper, you'll start to notice lots of different recurring words that seem to be very specific. Find out what they mean and why they're used. All of this is much more useful for a general conversation compared to a large vocabulary because it's just much more truthful to reality. Whenever trying something new, one usually gets the ball rolling and starts having a general understanding of the basics and of what's going on. Things are going great and this is going to be easy. And then you hit a wall suddenly and come down crashing. You hit a dip and feel like it never worked out as anticipated. It's at this point when it's most important to realize that and to keep going. YouTuber Johnny Harris has a great video about this where he states everything much better than I'll ever be able to. So I will put the link down in the description below as always. The final and probably even most important part of gluing it all together is sleep. Getting 8 hours of sleep is necessary to let the brain work at its highest capacity. You can also memorize the words directly before sleeping, since that's a great way to make them stick. Stage 4. Start to connect. As said, at one point you'll most probably hit a wall. Once you're burning out on memorization and when excitement fades, so will your consistency and motivation. And that's the most important hurdle to overcome. Lucky for all of us, we have access to more opportunities to make the process as fun as possible. With platforms like Netflix, YouTube, Spotify and podcasts, your options are basically limitless. Dive deeper into the language by drinking from all the sources and simply try to follow along as much as you can. You won't be able to understand everything, but you'll probably notice that you know more than you thought. Turn on subtitles, rewind if you have to and keep it light to make it fun for yourself. Listen to native music and sing and dance along, <laughs> you can let it all out. Prepare some snacks and get lazy by treating yourself with a good show. Enjoy the content and indulge in mindless entertainment by making it mindful. For example, I started watching La Casa de Pape on Netflix and ordered a few Spanish children books and learned a good bit of Spanish along the way. These are great opportunities to spice up everyday life and make the normal more exciting again while learning and growing at the same time. This way you can listen to new music or international outlets like TuneIn.com CNN Espanol, Deutsche Welle or France 24 to name a few and you can use these to find creators and content that you enjoy. Discover new hobbies and interests and get a greater appreciation of the culture as a whole. It's a great way to see how people actually speak and not just try textbook learning. You know what, we're not gonna die of radon, we're gonna die of boredom, yeah. <laughs> right? By doing this you get the general sense of what the language and the culture are about. How to correctly speak a language and how people actually speak can be two very different things. You will start connecting the grammar and memorization to a real life usage and speed up the process. At one point it will just click and you could see how much progress you're making. The last stage, stage 5, make mistakes. You can go and f*** it up. This always sounds super counterintuitive and it's something teachers won't tell you but I think that is one of the main reasons why school is backwards sometimes. 
In school, you learn the lessons, study for a test, and if you make mistakes, you get punished. In real life, you get tested and naturally make mistakes, and then you learn from them. It's the exact opposite, and most people still seem to avoid taking risks at all costs for this reason. But you just have to take the leap and go for it. Start putting yourself out there and actually begin conversing with others. Your first conversations will be far from perfect, but that's the point. You have to make the mistakes to test what you learned and how to adjust and how to improve going forwards. Having conversations with strangers in a foreign language in times of social distancing and face masks isn't easy. Under normal circumstances, traveling would be the best way to put your skills to the test and to expand on them. Not only is it a great tool to learn, but the experiences themselves are priceless. And that's what you should do if it's possible again. You can then actually experience that world in a totally different way. And that's kind of like unlocking a world that you otherwise would have never gained access to. Like Narnia or Hogwarts for example, where the new language is the closet or train for Hogwarts and the new world is the experiences you are now able to have. For now, with COVID going on, you can reach out on people on social media, you can ask people on Reddit, you can probably pay people on Fiverr just to have a conversation with you, or you can even use websites like italki.com, which allows you to talk to native speakers for just 5 bucks an hour. Just set up your Skype or Zoom call and get it going. And there are probably tons of other options that I won't go into right now, because the point is this, if you really want to learn a language, you have to put your skills to the test. Again, you can't just study your way to proficiency, and that's why. If you really want to learn, you will also find ways to make that happen. Now go ahead and enter a new world. Some sources or Google state that you can become fluent in any language if you study for 10 hours per day for 48 days straight. No one has that kind of time, so as I said earlier, it's okay to be obsessive when starting out, but I doubt that anyone thought of doing 10 hour shifts to memorize vocabulary and you shouldn't expect to be fluent in two months from now, which also isn't the point of this whole thing. The point isn't to not make any mistakes, it's to speak with somebody in a new way and to exchange ideas. You're not trying to achieve mastery in seven days or whatever, we simply want basic human interactions that can then lead to much more. Putting the focus on communication instead of perfection makes it much easier to see the finish line and to stay motivated. It's only through this that you can actually succeed in finding your own personal Narnia. That's it for today guys, I'll see you guys next week and until then stay healthy and have a great week.